Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon and good evening and welcome to the latest OEP All-Star session with Swoosh English. My name's Scott, I'm your expert OET teacher and managing director today for the session and I hope you're well and uh, thanks a lot for coming along. So before we begin, it'd be nice to know everyone who's joined the session today. Let us know in the chat box where you're from and uh, what time it is with you or just greet yourself as much as you can in the session and I'll call out a few comments as they come in. Um, I won't be able to show all comments because we are streaming today across numerous channels on Swoosh English as well as across OET, um, official YouTube channel as well. So wherever you are, thank you very much for uh, checking in today. So a lot of people over on the OET YouTube channel is saying hello. Hello, Mary, Joanna, Dia, Natalia, Namisha, Sean, Thomas, Monica, Ferry, and Leila, as well as countless others. Thank you very much for checking in today and joining us on the session. And we've got a number of students also saying hello on the Swoosh English channel as well, including Ijaz. Hello, Ijaz from Pakistan, and welcome today. And we have Shiny from India, who has said it's also 2.30 p.m. as well. So welcome, guys, and thank you so much for coming along. We've got a great action-packed session today on OET writing. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it and get stuck into the lesson. So in today's lesson, guys, we're going to be focusing on understanding the OET writing criteria. Perhaps you're at the very beginning of your OET writing, uh, your OET preparation journey and OET writing is completely new to you, or perhaps you're just needing a bit of a refresher on the writing criteria to help you with your scores. We're also gonna look at and follow a step-by-step -step guide on how to master your OET letter writing. We'll be looking at how to structure an OET letter. We'll be identifying useful grammar that you should use in your letter, as well as some that you probably shouldn't use. And we're gonna learn how to successfully proofread your letter. And that last point I'm focusing on right now is a crucial step that you want to take to improve your OET writing, a much overlooked step, but something that shouldn't be done. So of course, um, we're Swoosh English, we're an OET, OET All-Star, an OET premium preparation provider. We've been helping students pass their OET exams with speed, certainty and ease now for over 10 years. So this is not where we hope that your OET preparation journey will end with Swoosh English. We're in a free session today. We'd like you to invite, we'd like to invite you to another free session that we host every Friday, and that's our free OEP FastPass Masterclass. This runs every Friday at 11 a.m. UK time. And in that session, you will learn various things, including the top five tips for each subtest, reading, speaking, writing, and listening, the do's and don'ts of OET preparation, find out what kind of student you are, and lots more valuable advice and methods for passing your OET exam first or next time. So if you are in, there's a few ways that you can join that session. Firstly, there's gonna be a link appearing in the chat wherever you are watching. So if you're watching on the OET Facebook and YouTube channels, you may see the link, you may not. I'll skip the steps to two in a moment to go through that. But if you're watching on the Swoosh English channels, you should see a link now appearing on your uh, in your chat box that you are seeing. Also in the OET YouTube channel, the link will be in the description of the tab that you are watching. So you can click through on that link. The second way that you can join our free session is to get your phone, get your QR reader and scan that barcode that you can see in front of you on the screen. So I'll give everyone a few seconds. If you want to simply scan that barcode now and then get registered, you can do that while you're watching the class. And that means your spot is secured for the next session, which actually is in two hours time, but you will be opted into the session uh, on the following week as well. So one opt-in gets you signed up to every class you want to sign up to, you can do that there. Okay, we will bring up that barcode at the end of the class, don't worry. Now, the next step that you can take in order to access the link, if you can't see the link in the chat box or you're unable to scan the QR code for whatever reason, well then simply pop on over to our website, www swooshenglish.com and around the bottom right hand side of the screen you'll see a little chat box enter that chat box our customer advice team will be very happy to advise you on your options for passing OET but simply chat to our team 
ask to join the free OET Fast Pass Masterclass, and we will get you sorted. I'll bring up this information more towards the end of the class, but I look forward to seeing you in our Fast Pass Masterclass. All right, guys, let's get into today's session. First and foremost, I love to get to know my students here at Swoosh English. So the question I always like to ask is, when do you plan to take your OET exam? So let me know in the chat box, guys, chat bot, chat box, when you plan to take your OET exam. Is it coming up tomorrow, perhaps, in a week's time, in a month's time, a few months' time, unbooked or unsure at this point? Please let me know in the chat box when you are taking your OET exam. And we've got some comments coming in from the Swoosh English channel saying the exam is being taken very, very soon. We have some saying next week. We have some saying tomorrow as well. So we got a lot of candidates taking this exam um, at various points in the year, at various degrees of preparation. Okay, regardless of what you're saying today, guys, what is important is that you only take this exam when you are ready. And by ready, I mean that you have as much evidence as possible to ascertain that you will be able to pass your exam on this attempt or the next. That is my number one piece of advice to anyone taking the OET exam is only book when you are ready. Okay, so keep that in mind. Thank you a lot for all of your comments. Kenna Lamang has also said tomorrow in the chat box here today as well. Kenna Malang, let me know how you're getting on and if you're feeling ready for your preparation. Thank you very much for your comments. Okay, let's now move on to the lesson, the main lesson today. Now, hopefully you know at this point, especially those taking the exam tomorrow, that there are six separate criteria for OET writing, aka you were assessed in six different areas to get your passing score. Question is, do you know what the criteria are? So let us know in the chat box, guys. Chat box, sorry, I keep mixing, mixing up bot and box today. Let us know in the chat box what the criteria are. So you can throw in one criteria, two, or all six if you know them. But throw me in, throw the answer into the chat box, please. And let us know what you know about OBT writing. Show off your skills, show off what you know um, already. And prefacing the lesson we're going to go through because it's important that we contextualize that with the OET writing criteria. So there will be a use to actually telling me what they are very soon. So let's wait a moment until all of the um, all of the comments come through with all of the information. I'm seeing a few come in bit by bit. Okay. Some of you know all six by the looks of things. Some of you are giving me a few at a time. That's fine. That's good. Great, so we've all got a bit of a collective knowledge about what the criteria are. Very good. So let's go through them one by one now and see how correct you were with the criteria. Okay, so the first one that many of you have been putting into the chat box is purpose. A few of you have also identified content, conciseness and clarity, genre and style, organization and layout, and language. So these are the six criteria that you are assessed on for your OET writing. Purpose, content, conciseness and clarity, genre and style, organization and layout, and language. So what exactly do all of these six criteria entail? And what can you do as a general overview to ensure that you are scoring as well as you can? Now, of course, I can't go into every single criteria in this class by itself. That's a whole curriculum that will need to do that. But I'll give you some pointers that you should be looking out for to score as well as you can. So let's look now how to score highly in the assessment criteria. So firstly, purpose. Purpose, I believe, is the backbone to any well-written OET letter. It is your reason for writing. What are you trying to achieve in your letter. Without a clear purpose, the rest of your letter can fall apart because you won't pick the right information. You won't address it to the right person to achieve the right outcome. So you need to make sure that your purpose is immediately clear in the first subsection of your letter, okay? Make it immediately clear about what you're trying to achieve and to whom. 
So you need to do, consider who you are writing to and what information they need to know. It's not rocket science, but it needs to follow a certain formula. Who are we writing to? What are we writing about? Who are we writing to? I said that twice, sorry. And what do they need to know? All in the first paragraph is your first stepping stone to writing a clear purpose-driven letter. Then we have content. So content follows on from purpose in that, okay, we now know what we want to achieve. What is the key information from the case notes that must be included to give the reader the information that they need to know from me to fulfill my purpose of this letter? So what's the key information that we must then extract and extrapolate and then develop into a coherent set of sentences and subsections in our letter. So to do that, we need to ensure that no important details are missing. Therefore, we need to identify what we need to write about in the letter at the beginning. And also the information must be accurate. If we're not co correctly extracting that information and putting it into our letter, then we'll fall down in the content score for writing inaccurate information. Now, alongside content, there is conciseness and clarity. Likewise, we might be extracting the key information for content, but there's also a lot of irrelevant information in the case notes that we don't need. So we need to identify that and ensure that we are not including that irrelevant information, okay? That way, we'll be able to summarize the information that we need to identify well and present everything clearly in our OET letter. So conciseness and clarity has two things we must look at. One, ensuring that we are including the relevant information only and excluding the irrelevant information. But two, how can we present the relevant information in a clear, easy to understand and concise way? Okay, so two things we must look at for conciseness and clarity. All right, then we have genre and style, which is write the letter, how we structure it, how we present the information. So we are, you are healthcare professionals, you're probably quite used to writing in a clinical and factual style, which isn't super formal, but also is um, informal. So it's not quite as formal as an academic essay, for example, that you might write in the IELTS exam or other university academic papers, but it's also not informal like a friend to a letter. It's somewhere in the middle, clinical and factual, the information that needs to be presented is done in a clear, easy to understand and factual way. We must ensure that technical language and abbreviations are appropriate for the reader. We need to identify who we are writing to. If we are a doctor writing to another doctor, then it might be okay to include some medical jargon that the lay person wouldn't understand because doctors will understand that. But if we're writing to someone who may be a social worker, for example, then we must assume that we must take a more layman understanding style. So remove the technical language and the abbreviations and present it in a way that the average person can understand. We also must learn how to use polite language for requests. So how can we request, request things in a polite and non-direct way? Then we have organization and layered. So how do we organize the information into appropriate subsections? Key tip I have for OET writing and anyone who's watching this session today is that there is no template for OET writing. No template whatsoever. We must not rely on a templated approach because every letter has a different purpose, a different reader, a different set of information, a different outcome. And therefore, we need to be able to learn how to identify how to write the appropriate letter on time in the five minutes of preparation time with plenty of practice beforehand. So please don't rely on templates for OET writing. It is a recipe for failure, literally. So we must learn how to organize the information into appropriate subsections before we write our letter. We must ensure the information is appropriate, logical, and clear. And we must clearly highlight any key information that we want to include, aka in the topic sentence of every subsection, and identify where it needs to be in order of the letter. Okay, hope you're following me so far. The final subsection is language, and that is our everyday use of English, such as our spelling, our punctuation, our vocabulary, our grammar, our sentence structure, all of that. We need to ensure that they are accurate. 
And the key word I want to highlight here, guys, is that it needs to be accurate, not complicated, not complex, accurate. We don't need to show off our range, our complexity of English for this exam. An appropriate range must be identified, but accuracy is more important than complexity. So please don't try and find a way to throw in the present perfect continuous if we don't need to use it in this letter, because often we won't have to. The point is, is that we must make sure it is accurate and easily understood. Then finally, we must take time at the end to check all of the above. We must proofread and get into a habit of proofreading and make time to proofread at the end of every letter that we write, because that is a way for you to save some marks that you wouldn't get. You probably will make mistakes with your spelling, your punctuation, your vocabulary, etc. when writing your letter. And guess what, guys? Mistakes are okay. We're not, OET are not asking for, uh, the examiner is not asking for perfection, but they're asking for a C le C1 level of English. That will include some mistakes. We still must minimize the mistakes that we make when we're writing our letter. So hopefully you found that useful, the overview of the six criteria. So we're now going to get into a step-by-step -step guide for OET writing, something that you can take away today if you're starting your OET writing journey, and also for anyone to review their current progress in their OET writing to ensure that you are doing the exact same thing. Okay, so when you're starting your OET writing, you have 45 minutes in total to write a letter. But at the very beginning, you have five minutes of preparation time to read the case notes, identify key information before you start writing. And it's a great thing that OET have done that because what lots of candidates do for other English language exams is they get straight into the writing process without any clear idea about how they're going to go about it. So you have five minutes that you are forced to read and assess. So what can you do in those five minutes of time? Well, we'll start with the case notes, okay? So what we should look at at the very beginning is the notes section and the writing task. And we'll find some key information in these two areas that will help us with the first thing that we should do in OET writing, and that is identify our purpose, okay? So once you've identified the notes in the writing section, I want you to get into the habit of asking yourself, the following four questions. One, who are you? What is the role that you are carrying out in this OET writing exercise? Question two, who is the patient? Who are you writing to? What key information can you identify with them? Question three, who are you writing to? Who is the recipient and the reader? And then question four, why are you writing? What do you want to achieve? in your letter. So take note of these four questions you should ask yourself in your OET writing. You might even want to write these down and scribble down some notes or type out some notes if you're doing online practice before you begin any OET writing practice. And it will help you guide yourself to writing the appropriate letter at the very beginning. Okay, so let's identify the answers to these four questions with these case notes here. Okay, so who are you? Well, as identified in the case notes, you are the charge nurse. So your role is a nurse in this particular letter. Who is the patient? The patient is a man called Dr. Doctor, sorry, Mr. Gerald Baker, who is a 79 year old patient of the ward of a hospital. So an elderly gentleman is who you're taking care of. Question three, who are you writing to? So you are writing to a Miss Samantha Bruin, a senior nurse at Grey Walls Nursing Home. Okay, so we're writing from a nurse to another nurse in a separate institution. Now, why are you writing? Well, it says you will be responsible for Mr. Baker's continued care at the nursing home. So we're gonna transfer this man, in particular nursing care, to another nursing home with other nurses taking care of them. So how can we transfer all of the essential information from one nurse to another, from the hospital on the ward to a nursing home? So that we identify these four questions, this should make it easier for us now to start crafting our purpose and extracting that relevant information that we need to identify this information here. So step three is to then move on to planning your letter. How can we plan this at the very beginning? Okay, so as mentioned, there's a few bullet points here I want to go through. I want to emphasize this again, but there is no set template for the OET letter. Please don't rely on a templated approach. You will not pass. 
I repeat, you will not pass if you simply copy templates. You need to go through the appropriate process in order to ensure you're going to pass. So please keep that in mind, guys. Now, we need to also organize the information in the best way for your reader. And we can do that by dividing the information into clear subsections. So every OET letter should have relatively short paragraphs or subsections. There shouldn't be too long. And there should be a variety of them. Too long a subsection isn't clear, isn't concise, it's not readable, and we probably waffle by giving too much information. So a few ways that you might decide to structure your letter, okay? Um, this obviously needs to be assessed on the fly, depending on your purpose. But one, we can structure it chronologically. So we start with the all this information in the timeline of the case notes and then proceed through to the most recent information. So chronological order, it can make sense. But then thematically is the most important information goes first. So the most relevant information that we want to get across for our purpose goes first. And then we taper down into the least irrelevant information, but still important. So chronologically and thematically, I've seen numerous um, writers use two of these formats, and largely they're both very successful. But once again, you need to assess the OET letter itself and see what makes more sense for the set of case notes and the purpose that you want to uh, achieve in your letter. So you also... Also, consider the order of your sentences. The important details must be clearly highlighted. So what I want to emphasize with this bullet point here is the need for a clearly structured subsection. The topic sentence, aka the most important information that kind of highlights everything that's happening in the subsection should go first. And then the rest of the information in the subsection should back up what that topic is. So make sure you put the most important information first at the beginning of a, su of a subsection and keep it short and snappy, okay? Right, now, here is the plan for a Gerald Baker letter. So the key word here, guys, that this is an example plan. This is not the only way this letter can be written, but as an example plan of something that could get you a high score. So please note that we've divided this into five subsections in total, and the subsections will look like something like this. The first subsection should always be your purpose paragraph, okay? What are you writing about? What do you want to achieve? Who are you writing to? In this example, is discharging of a patient after a hip replacement from one hospital ward to another. That's the purpose and the care that we want to achieve afterwards, okay? Section two is then the discharge plan. So the medication, the dressing changes, the current mobility, the exercises, the OT walker, wedge pillow, toilet razor. So all of the key things that need to happen next in the discharge plan, because that's what's going to happen. Then we have section three, which is the post-operative state, the continued observations, the red blood cell transfusion, high blood pressure stable, monitor for anemia, etc., cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's the other information that needs to be identified that's not necessarily part of the discharge plan, but is still key to know. Then subsection four, the next clinical appointment, 23rd September, removal of staples, follow-up blood test. Final subsection is the polite sign-off at the very, very end. So a very short subsection. So here's an example of the plan. This one will exam is an example of thematic aka we've taken the most important information first, the purpose, discharge plan, further observations, clinical appointments, and polite sign-off at the very end. So we can divide it into these five subsections with an appropriate word count. We're doing pretty well. So if anyone has done the Gerald Baker case notes so far, you may have taken an example like this or you may have done something different. But here's something to look at when we're writing our letter. So now that we've got an idea about who we're writing to, what we're writing about, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, how we might want to structure this letter. The next step then is to write the letter. So to start off writing the letter, we're going to look at a sample purpose subsection. So the question I have for everyone here is, which option here best expresses the purpose for this letter? So have a look and tell me which one you think, A, B, or C. A, I'd like you to look after Baker, who had a total left hip replacement 
and needs your management here. B, I am writing regarding Gerald Baker, who underwent a left total hip replacement and is being discharged from City Hospital back into your care today. Or C, Gerald Baker will be discharged today back into your care. So which of these sample purpose subsections do you think is the best and why? Simply type in A, B, or C into the chat box. And if you like as well, give a bit of information. Tell us why you think A, B, or C is better and tell us your reasoning behind it. I'll give everyone a bit of time just to complete that and I'll check for the comments coming through in every section. Thank you very much for taking part in this activity, guys. Also, while you're waiting for the activities to come in, if you're enjoying this uh, class today, well, then make sure that you give us um, a like or a comment on Facebook or YouTube. You subscribe to the Swoosh English YouTube channel if you're watching. Subscribe to the OET YouTube channel if you're watching as well. And just yeah, give us some encouragement about what we're doing well. We love feedback here. And uh, we wish you to follow us on our journey as well as help you in your own journey too. Thank you. Okay, great. So all the comments are coming in. We've got quite um, quite a majority are answering one section. Okay, one answer has become the majority answer. So let's see if you were all right. Very good. So the best answer that would have scored highest for purpose is B. I am writing regarding Gerald Baker who underwent a left total hip replacement and is being discharged from City Hospital back into your care today. So well done to everyone who answered B. Why is B better than A or C? Well, A for one isn't great because it's too informal. I'd like you to look after. It's very, very, very informal, very, very colloquial in how it's being used. Also, who's Baker? Baker's the surname. We should say the full name, Gerald Baker. Okay, so it's too informal. It doesn't say the patient's first name, even though the second half of the subsection is quite good. Who had a total left hip replacement and needs your management and care? But this section needs a bit of work. Let's move on to C. So C, for one, doesn't mention where he is coming from and why he was there. So it just says, Gerald Baker will be discharged back into your care. Okay, uh, and what? What about that? What do I need to do in coming into care? What information do I need? Who is the patient? What more information do I need? So that section is lacking a lot of key information it needs to be um, described in the first subsection of the purpose paragraph. That is why B is good. One, it's got a great tone. So in terms of genre and style, it was scored pretty highly. I am writing regarding Gerald Baker, who underwent a left total hip replacement and is being discharged from City Hospital back into your care today. So all the key information that I need is there. It's written in a clinical style that's factual and informational. And also it's very clear what I have to do next about this person. So it scores very, very highly as a whole. AKA the purpose is immediately apparent in this subsection. So he wrote something like this, you're doing quite well. Okay, well done guys. So feel free of course, to when you're doing um, the rest of the Gerald Baker letter to think about how you would write the rest of your letter taking into account that subsection. Let's look now at ways that we can perfect our grammar when we're doing our writing for OET. So as mentioned at the very beginning of this session is we want to keep everything as simple and informational as possible. How can we communicate as clearly to keep things accurate? Now, we don't want to extend our grammatical reach well beyond what we need to, but we do need to keep in mind some useful forms that you'll want to use in your letter because if used well, well, it just simply improves all aspects of clinical communication. They include the passive voice, using relative clauses and connectors. So let's go through these three grammatical structures and see how you can adapt them and perfect them for your OET writing. So firstly, there's a passive voice. The passive voice is used when the focus is on the action rather than the person doing the action, okay? So we take, we've taken the subject of the sentence, typically the person, and we put the subject at the end. We've brought the object then to the beginning to put emphasis on the action rather than the purpose. So here's an example. Follow-up blood tests will be conducted. 
passive voice. The action, aka the follow-up blood tests, has been put at the start of a sentence. Notice that the subject isn't here. So instead of saying, I will conduct follow-up blood tests, it says follow-up blood tests will be conducted, often used in the clinical setting. Second example, Mr. Baker was rec uh, recommended on 100 milligrams of aspirin daily. Once again, we've used a passive voice by instead of saying, I will give Mr. Baker 100, rec 100 milligrams of aspirin daily, Mr. Baker was recommended on 100 milligrams of aspirin daily. So think about how we can use the passive voice in our sentence writing for a clinical and factual style. The second thing we could look at is the usage of relative clauses. So a relative clause is used to provide additional information about the subject in a way that allows us to combine two pieces of information into one sentence. So the good thing about using relative clauses is that we can write a complex sentence very, very easily using a certain structure rather than making it too complicated or too simple. So we often use relative clauses in our introductory purpose subsection. I am writing regarding Mr. Baker, who underwent a total left hip replacement and is being discharged today. So the usage of our relative pronoun, who, what, where, or that, is used here. So we combine two informations, combining the relative pronoun to make use of it. So please take note of using relative clauses in your, um, in your OET writing, especially for your introductory paragraph. The final grammatical thing that we want to look at is the usage of connectors. So it's really important that we can join information together in a sequential order to give our letter structure and to give it flow. So we should be looking at a variety of connectors that we can use to join information together. And please get um, recommendations and advice from expert OET teachers about how to use the connectors as well as other grammatical structures too. So here's an example of a few connectors that we can use to create a flow of information inter subsection or even intra subsection, aka from one subsection to another. In addition to his usual treatment for hypertension, he requires pain relief and daily dressing changes. He has an appointment to have his staples removed as well as a follow blood up blood test. Apologies. So we've got in addition, we've used and, and we've used as well as. There is a massive list of connectors that can be used, and it's important that we don't overdo them, but if we can get used to using a few connectors of sequence, contrast, and order, for example, they'll serve us very well in our OET writing. So let us know what connectors you typically use in your OET writing. Now, the final step we want to move on to is proof reading, okay? So what we want to do before we start actually going into our OET test itself is we want to be writing for about 35 minutes of our time. We want to get to a pace where you're able to write your whole letter within 35 minutes and you have a comfortable five minutes left to proofread and check your letters, okay? It's really important that we do this because this is a way for you to make marks that you otherwise wouldn't have made. So things that we can do in the proofreading is checking for your spelling, your punctuation and grammar. Skim over the entire letter and check for things. You'll probably pick up spelling mistakes. You'll pick up punctuation errors. You might even realize that you haven't used the grammatical structure correctly and correct that immediately. Is the letter formatted correctly? Is the purpose clear? Is it immediately apparent and expanded upon later in the letter? Is the content accurate and relevant? Are all of your requests clear and polite? And did you use an appropriate sign off at the end? These would be the six that I would look at, especially the first one. Is your spelling, punctuation, and grammar accurate at the very end? If we can take a five, five minutes to skim over our letter, and check for everything, then we are able to probably get some extra marks that we wouldn't otherwise have done. One question I do typically get, and I'll go full screen for this, is should I word count at the very end of my letter? Typically, no, we shouldn't word count. Um, for the sake of word counting, 
But in doing the other things like checking the letter formats, checking our grammar, checking our vocab, checking our purpose, we'll probably make additions to our word count otherwise. So we shouldn't word count for the sake of word counting, but we probably will make changes if we identify changes in the letter. Now, there isn't any hard and fast rule when it comes to word count in OET writing, guys. There, you aren't going to get lower marks for going above the recommended word count of 180 to 220 words. That's not going to happen. Where the word count can affect your letter is if you are writing too much, which impacts on your ability to be concise and to be clear, therefore impacting your conciseness and clarity. You will probably write sentences that are too long. You'll probably include too much irrelevant information and that will impact that section. So that's what you need to be aware of when it comes to word count is 180 to 220 words is a rough guide. If you go over, you may, you may not lose marks. If you go under, you may or you may not lose marks, but it's still a good guide in itself. But don't be obsessed about word count by itself when it comes to OET writing. Keep that in mind. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to put that out there. So yes, take a note of all of these things that you want to do when it comes to assessing your proofreading, guys, and assessing your ability to write a letter. But please get into the habit of taking five minutes at the end of your OET letter to assess your spelling, your punctuation, and your grammar effectively. It is a much, much needed strategy and tool to get that B or above score. Okay, right. Let's review what we've learned today in the lesson. Okay, so guys, takeaways from today is you should be familiar with the OBT assessment criteria. If you're not, then make sure that you are. You know all six criteria like the back of your hand. I want you to keep that criteria in mind when you write your letter. You should be writing to fulfill the criteria. That is your purpose in doing this letter, is to score as highly as you can. And to do that, you need to be aware about what you are aiming for. What criteria must you hit and how do you do that? Make sure you always leave time at the end to check your writing. Please get into the habit and the efficiencies of writing within about 35 minutes, your first draft of your letter, and then taking five minutes at the end to proofread and check. Now to do this, you need to get plenty of practice writing letters and get experienced OET teacher feedback. Practice makes perfect when it comes to this, like learning how to drive a car or ride a bike or learn a language like you are doing. You won't be fantastic at this the first time that you do it. You will get better from trying again, learning from your mistakes, taking on board the feedback, re-practicing, rinse and repeat until you just get so good at this that you can do an autopilot. That's the level you want to get into doing before you do your OET exam. So to do that, you also need to know your areas of weakness so you continue to make improvements. You might be very good at writing purpose. You might be very good at clinical language. You might be fantastic at writing accurately, but you're not too good or too fast at extracting irrelevant or irrelevant case notes, which could make a difference on your day. So make sure that you are getting the information that you need to know what you're doing well, understand what you're not doing so well, and know what you have to do to improve that to get your passing score on the day. Often the difference between a first time passer and a number, number of times passers from my experience. Okay guys, thank you so much for today and for coming along. Much appreciated for attending my session today on OBT writing. Once again, if you enjoyed the session, please give us a like, please give, please give us a follow. But as a reminder, that's not the only free sessions that we actually do here at Switch English. We have a free OET Fast Pass Masterclass every Friday at 11 a.m. UK time. So there's one in one hour and 20 minutes, but we have one every Friday. So you can register now to claim your spot for this session coming, as well as future sessions coming as well. So there's one sign up to get registered for all the sessions that you need. So in the session, We'll go through more tips and strategies for each section of the subtest, uh, each subtest of the test, sorry, speaking, reading, writing, and listening. You'll learn about the do's and don'ts of OET preparation. You'll find out what kind of student you are, understand your study plan, and lots, lots more inside this session. So if you are in, there are a few things that you can do to join the session. Okay, the first thing is that there'll be a link appearing 
definitely if you're watching on the swoosh english channels on facebook and youtube there will be a link appearing in the comment box so click on that link go across to the sign up page insert your information and to to get going you may see the link on the obt youtube channel you may not okay so there's a few things that you can do if you're watching on the obt youtube channel to get signed up in the description section of the obt all-star session that we're hosting click on that you will see the link to sign up it's called obt fast pass mass class that is the link that you can click to get signed up if you can't do that well then option two for you is to scan this QR code that you can see here. So if you wanna just get your phones out, guys, if you have your phone handy, and most of us do these days, scan that QR code, and it will take you then across to the sign up page where you can get signed and get started from right there. Okay, I'll give everyone a few seconds if you want to get your phone out, scan that QR code, and get signed up to the next OET FastPass Masterclass that we run, or everyone that we run. Okay, you can let me know you want me to go back at some point, I can. The final thing that you can do if you can't get signed up via the link or the QR code, well, is simply pop on over to www.swishenglish.com and in the bottom right-hand side of the screen, there will be a little chat with us button. Our course advisors are there to help you with everything when it comes to OET passing and preparation. All you have to do is simply ask can I, can I join the masterclass? Click masterclass, whatever you want to do. Our team will know exactly what to do. They will give you the sign up registration links and then you can join the next session. But please come across and ask our friendly team any questions about your OET preparation options and we will be sure to help you. Okay, guys, just check in the comments to make sure that everyone was able to join. Okay, there's a few people on the YouTube channel saying can't see the link okay that's not a problem that does sometimes happen with the when you're hosting on a different channel if you can't see the link then please scan this barcode if you can't see the link wherever it is then please scan this barcode with a qr reader on your phone and that will take you to the same sign up page that you would normally see if you were signing the link so i'll keep this on the screen for a moment for everyone who wants to sign up to the free class is to click is to scan this barcode alternatively if you can't see the link then come on over to our website www.swooshenglish.com and go to the chat bot section i got it right this time chat bot section on the bottom right hand side of the screen and ask our team to give you access to our fast pass masterclass that we're running in over an hour's time, but that will also give you access to every masterclass that we sign up to. So it's one sign up process to every fast pass masterclass that you want to sign up for. Hope that answered your question, guys, and I hope to see you in the sessions um, later on today. I'm moving on. Guys, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for investing in yourself as well by arming yourself with more information that you need to pass your OBT exams successfully. Hopefully you've come away today with some advice and insights that you didn't have before, or even reflections of what you've been doing so far and what you can do moving forward to improve your scores when it comes to OBT writing, grammar, proofreading, et cetera, et cetera. It's been a pleasure having you here today. So once again, guys, if you like this session, we appreciate all feedback. If you're watching this session um, on OET's channels or swooshes, then please give us a comment, give us a like, follow us on OET, follow the OET YouTube channel if you're watching there, follow the Swoosh English YouTube channel if you're watching there, and subscribe to our OET, uh, face, our OET Facebook group as well. So you can be up to date with all the great things that we're doing when it comes to preparation. Thank you very much. I want to share one comment before we begin. Thank you very much, Stephen Nicola, who has said amazing insight. You are very welcome, Stephen. And thank you very much for coming today. I hope that you got a lot out of the session. And to everyone else who's throwing in lots of comments, thank you very much to everyone who has appreciated this session today. Uh, once again, it's been a pleasure. Wish everyone the best of luck with their OET preparation. And if you're still preparing, I will see you next month for the next OET All-Star session that we do every month. But in the meantime, if you're wanting more information, then simply sign up to our free masterclass. And I'll see you today and every Friday 
as well as every Wednesday for our reading and uh, writing workshops that we run too. All you have to do to get to sign up to them is sign up to that masterclass link and we'll opt you in and we'll get you beginning uh, helping you with your OET preparation. So thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day. Good luck with your OET preparation. And I hope to see more of you very, very soon. Take care.